What's up ladies and gents and welcome to week 233, the newest edition of our top 5 plays on the Potato Monster channel. We have some pretty amazing plays ahead of us in this episode and then a HyperX giveaway for a Cloud 2 headset so don't click that browser and let's begin. Spim's owner is currently pressuring the mid tier 1 when she connects the charm and decides to all in. When she gets binded with a tower and Rango on her I think most people will get out but she actually dives further in, landing a final auto attack as she dashes to Thresh's lantern which keeps her alive. Rengar gets his ult off and moves in for the killing blow, but a blind hook into charm chunks him low and gets Ari some space. He flashes in to get the jump, but a perfectly timed flay denies him, and then Rengar tries to get away, but decides to just turn on Ari. And man, does he get close, but a last second Q shuts him down for the two for nothing, thanks to a great play from Thresh and Ari. Coming in at 4th place we have TSM Rice Bowl on Bane synergizing and outplaying alongside her Thresh. This is a completely clean game, no first blood yet, but Red Team's bot lane just got level 3 so they're down to scrap. Karma starts auto attacking because she has a creep wave advantage but then Thresh lands a hook and Bane springs into action, tumble dodging the bug shot while condemning Karma to the wall which also breaks her tether. She flashes away and gets healed so they're forced to swap targets to Graves and then slowly we see Thresh move to front line for Bane despite drawing creep aggro. They turn on Karma with a flay as Ignite and heal go up and then he flashes the bug shot while Vayne picks up first blood. Graves dashes in but Thresh breaks line of sight hooking him when he face checks and then Thresh takes off. The poor guy just wants at least one kill but Vayne says nope with a timely condemn using her Q to auto attack reset and secure the double kill. Landing in at third place we have Hasaki and Oriana with a massive play to defend a siege on mid. The enemy team want this tier 1 tower but the friendly Nidalee is coming for a flank to try and poke them out. She decides to go in on Ezreal after landing a spear and the enemy team respond but keep an eye on Oriana's ball as it lands in the center, pulling them all in with an amazing shockwave into 4 man taunt from Shen and then the follow up damage from Nidalee and Tristana. Just like that the enemy team's plan completely backfires and they end up getting aced all thanks to some great synergy and follow up from red team. Moving along and into our number 2 spot we have nice Kappa on Gnar with an incredible counter engage in a rank 5's game. He's split pushing the top lane when the enemy team get the jump on Ari and immediately blue team starts falling back. They want this fight so bad because Renekton has teleport so if they can get a bunch of kills here he can teleport back to stop Gnar from taking their base. Gnar starts teleporting in but it's too late for the enemy team because they already committed so hard. He shows up with a nasty ult into the wall completely turning around the momentum as Gragas comes in with body slam to continue the chain CC as they melt the enemy team. With their base exposed they can't afford to get aced here so they try to run away and distract for as long as possible but eventually they all meet the same fate and blue team takes the ace. Since their inhibs are already exposed blue team also gets a triple inhib which in a rank 5's game basically means it's game over. And for number 1 pro play for this week we have mid Ari pleased with a fantastic Anivia play in the early mid game. She's roaming down from mid to a fight breaking out near dragon placing the ult down but a key red buffed auto attack lets Anivia know which is the real Leblanc for an easy first kill. They go on Shen as Anivia walls off his escape path forcing him to flash over but here comes back up for the enemy team. She continues to auto attack moving in between each one which ends up dodging Shen's taunt as she backs up lays down the ult and ease for the double. Anivia has to fight her way out of this one and keeps calm auto attacking for now while waiting on cooldowns. Jarvin's getting close so she jukes him in the brush and puts her ult down again to discourage him from chasing and the moment they back off she turns it off to conserve mana. Anivia knows Jarvin's EQ will come up soon so she breaks line of sight again, queuing for the double stun which is the perfect time to all in with ignite and more auto attacks. Jarvin closes the gap and goes ham but she flashes while the burn damage finishes him off and then Vayne comes from the side but a quick wall blocks her off and isolates Soraka for a 1v1. Vayne goofs here and I think she thought the wall and Soraka will last a lot longer which gives Anivia a small window to get out. She did still have Egan with Fizz coming, I think she still would have gone now, but nonetheless what a crazy skirmish that was so well played. And for a bonus clip of the week we have Olivano and Jinx with superb cross map timing. I'm gonna show this play two times in a row, the first time from the enemy Kalista's point of view and then the second from the enemy Ari's. As you can see they both barely avoid dying under the tower so they breathe a sigh of relief and move back to recall at a safe place away from Bard. Ari's recalling first but on the minimap we see Jinx's rocket airborne already and well, rip. The moment Callista recalls the rocket collided for the instant double so let's see it again from Ari's perspective because she went back to base first. Thanks everyone for watching and to enter our Cloud2 headset giveaway please visit the link in the description box below to sign up. It takes about a minute to enter the giveaway and it really supports our channel so thanks to everyone who takes the time to follow through with that. If you're in need of a new headset or possibly just want to upgrade I can't say enough good things about the Cloud2. It's one of the more affordable headsets out there but it definitely surpassed my expectations in terms of quality so I'd highly recommend it to those who are currently looking in the market. If you use the Amazon links in the description box you can get 33% off on the headset so check it out and do some more research to see if it's right for you. Thanks again for watching this episode of our League of Legends Top 5 Plays and I hope you have a wonderful day.